champion interview with NFL great lawyer Malloy. We do recognize that you are already asking questions in the chat room. In the next segment, Mr. Malloy will be taking your questions. What we want to talk about uh, now uh, is some of the things that you're doing behind the scenes um, with, with your blessings. You want to just give us a little insight into uh, you're talking about philanthropy. Right? Philanthropy and giving back. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I think, you know, uh, football is, is easy. You know, I, luckily I've been uh, blessed by the Lord uh, with, with, uh, with athletic ability. Sure. So I can go out there and compete with the best athletes and all that. Um, but I think the legacy of a man is, is, is what you do outside of, of, of the norm. Right. And uh, wow. giving back is, uh, is, is one of them. Um, I, I, I come from the streets of Tacoma, Washington. Okay. Uh, I went to Eastside Boys Club. Um, mother and father struggled with uh, crack cocaine. Right. I was a foster kid. Okay. Um, you know, so I have so many, I'm a calico kid almost. Right. You know, I got, but I, when I was going through all of those struggles, uh, I think when I was 15, it really hit hard. Uh, while I was pretty much on the streets, I had enough people, uh, not, not many, but I had enough people take me in to give me a chance to get to where I'm at, I am now. Okay. And so um, uh, I, I, I set up my charity, the Lawyer Malloy Foundation, um, out in Boston when I was there. Yeah. Really uh, kind of died down in the last couple of years after I left there because of what you know the stuff I, to I told you about uh, New England, New England okay. leaving there. Right. Uh, it kind of hard and the passion kind of left out of there, but I am in the process now because I'm in my home city. I had a chance to play for the Seattle Seahawks. Right. I want to use my platform, bring my foundation here, and uh, uh, start giving back to my community. Sure. You know, uh, that's that's one of the things about me when when I when I'm on a team, I try to give that team and that city. My all, my all in heart, my dedication, or whatever. And now it's time for me to do that here in, in uh, Seattle. Um, one thing that uh, uh, that I have going on in July, I think July 9th and 12th, uh, I have a football camp going on at the Evergreen State College up in uh, Olympia, Washington. I think you can go to uh, www.footballcamps.com. Okay. I know they're giving discounts out for um, uh, uh, groups and teams or whatever. I got the number here. Um, anyway, but just go to the website. Um, I think me personally, I've, I've always, for whatever every team, whatever community I've been in, I've always made myself available. I'm one of those those athletes that really never sh turned down the handshake. Okay, you know, gotcha. and uh, yeah. that's really paid dividends for me because uh, I'm also thinking about the transition out of football. Sure. Um, and that's paid dividends because a lot of people. Uh, like smart business people always remember me from back in, even in college, you know, shaking hands, you know, always have something, I try to be intelligent, but have right. something, something to say, have right. something to bring to the table. And that's opened up a tremendous amount of doors for me right. uh, for life after football. Right, now at, at this stage, you said something um, about your community, right? And at this stage in your career, I mean, um, um, you, you've reached just about the highest of the game at the RV, right? So at this stage in your career, how, on a, on a really uh, a visceral level, on a real passionate human level, what does that mean for you to, to, to come back here and play for your home, you know, for your home state, for your hometown? It means it means a lot. Like I said, I, I seen the transformation of a city out in Boston uh, when you know I just saw the attitude change uh, uh, around that city when we brought that championship there. Yeah. yeah, you know, right? Um, and especially in, in this time right now with uh, this, the state of the economy. Uh, for, for, for me to be a part of uh, a team that can bring a champion a champion here mm -hmm. to my home sure would, would you know that's priceless priceless you know um, uh, like I said I've, 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 I've given not only my, my myself but the league I've, I've given them my all my all yes and uh, last year was the first time I, I really could go out there and, and, and play for the fans that's always supported me. Yeah. From uh, from day one, so yeah. that means a lot. Yeah, because I know I know the town went bananas, yeah. man. When you uh, uh, when you signed, you know everybody, Facebook, everything went crazy. Right. Everybody was throwing up the jersey with you know see all number and everything like that. And um, I think it's almost it's almost poetic. Yeah, you know it's always. It's I, would, I would love I would love to end my career here. Uh, we're actually in talks with the, the, the Seahawks right now. Okay. Uh, it looks like if uh, if I do sign, it'll be a, a lot bigger role than I was in last year. I wasn't okay. all the way happy with with my my role, my playing time okay. last year, but uh, I accepted it. And that's one thing about me. Oh, you know, I'm a, I'm I'm loyal. 
to uh, to the situation. I came the, the, the week right before um, uh, the first game. They already had everything implemented or whatever, and uh, I bit the bullet. You know, I bit right. the bullet. Right. One thing about being a leader, you lead by example. If I was going there into the, the locker room and you know say, hey, yeah. you know, why, you know, here I, you know, this 14 years, you know, all, you know, all pro, whatever, two bowl champion, why, why aren't I playing? That's not the message that I want to deliver to these young guys. That's not the foundation that I want to lay out to them. So I bit the bullet, and, it, 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 and I think everybody around there knew that it was hard for me. Um, but the one good thing about it is that there's another day, there's another season. Right. Preparing, uh, uh, I, I still feel great. I think every time I got my opportunity last year, I went out there and I, I did my thing. Did. Um, it looks like this year it's a little bit different situation. Uh, it's, it's open for competition. That's with, with Pete Carroll, which is the coach that I had in New England. Yeah. He, he, uh, he told me personally. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really geared up to, to really be at a, a, a a front run, run a role for my city. Right, right, right. And, that, and I mean, that's a role that it, it, it seems that that's customary for you. Um, because I know, I know. So that, I know. Yeah, I know. I know. That Last year was different for me. Right, right. it was different. Yeah, because I know that. Um, and when you were in Atlanta, you know, everybody was, you know, you were the leader there. You know what I mean? Yeah, every, every situation um, that I've been in, uh, every team until last year, I've been a leader. And I wouldn't even say, I wouldn't. Uh, Disregard my leadership last year. I exactly. think that, that guy still looked up to me. Sure. Um, I, I just felt like a little less. I, I just felt like I didn't have the the, 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 the platform I needed to really really deliver uh, total leadership. You know, I really I still felt like a leader. The guys respected me to the fullest. Sure. Um, the locker room was great. Um, but you know, in order to have you know total attention, you need to be out there every snap. You know, it's leading the way right. or whatever, and that's that's what I didn't have last year. Absolutely, absolutely. Now going back to the philanthropy a little bit, mm -hmm. um, you know, your story is, is just your personal story is is, is fantastic. Um, um, disadvantage, a lot of disadvantages, a lot of hardship, a lot of challenges when you were coming up. Right. Um, and as you know, there are many people out there right now right. that are watching this. There's people all over the place watching this interview right now, right. and that uh, you know maybe they want to be an NFL player. Maybe they want to be uh, an Indian player. Maybe they want to be a rocket scientist, whatever. Out of everything that you've learned in your stellar career, what would you say most to people to encourage them to persevere right. and not give up? Whatever your hardship is, uh, your adversity, um, don't use it as a crutch. Use, wow. it, use it to make, make you better. You know, yeah. um, That's the one thing about me is that I was uh, unlike some young young guy young guys that got to the NFL uh, didn't know how to handle um, the fame, the celebrity, the money. I think because of of what I went through, uh, because of the way I handled it, mm -hmm. because I got the way I got through it, it made me more ready for uh, for the NFL, okay. for life. Sure. You know, so as long as you you, you, you try to get through it in, in a positive way. You don't use it as a crutch, or oh, woe is me, here I go again. There's a lot of a million stories out there like like my story. Right. You know, and I, I, I recognize that. I realize it. You know, um, that's the best advice I can give you. Yeah, don't do not use your adversity as a crutch. As a crutch. As a crutch. Use it as a building block, you know, to get you better, to, to make to make you stronger as a as an individual. Right. The Morning Malloy Foundation isn't uh, geared or, or focus on one specific uh, uh, situation or cause, like you know, cancer, you know, uh, uh, alcohol, whatever. I I listen to all stories, mm -hmm. and I raise money. I might raise, you know, do a do a, a camp or an event for you know one particular cause, but then I can go on, sure, and and, and do some you know totally different. Calico um, kid, Calico kid, right? Right, right. And that way I get more out of it, and I think everybody else do also. Right, right. So everybody out there watching, um, look soon for more information coming about the Laura Malloy Foundation and things like that and other efforts that this stellar individual is doing for to help his community. When we come back, we are going to start taking your questions. So get ready, get your best thoughts together, uh, and Laura Malloy will be waiting on you. <laughs> He's be <But> kind. <laughs> and we will be back in two minutes.